In this experiment, we will use electrophilic aromatic substitution to add a nitro group to methyl benzoate. Anytime you are conducting experiments in the lab, be sure to wear closed toe shoes, long pants, a shirt that covers your shoulders, wear goggles, and gloves. In the first part of the experiment, the electrophile for our reaction, a nitronium ion, will be generated using a mixture of sulfuric and nitric acids. We will then add our starting material, methyl benzoate, to complete the electrophilic aromatic substitution. This reaction is exothermic, so we'll need to prepare an ice bath. Begin by placing some ice in a beaker. Then add some water to the beaker. Place a 25 milliliter round bottom flask with a stir bar into the ice bath. Secure the flask with a clamp. Make sure the flask is positioned close enough to the stir plate to ensure proper stirring. Transfer some of the concentrated sulfuric acid into a beaker to make it easier to pour. Measure out 8 milliliters of the sulfuric acid and add it to the flask. Place a the thermometer in the flask. Measure out 1 milliliter of the concentrated nitric acid. Cautiously add the nitric acid dropwise to the flask. This step is to generate the nitronium ion which functions as the electrophile in our reaction. Obtain a vial of methyl benzoate from your TA. Tear the scale and weigh your vial. Record the weight and make sure your TA is present to sign your practical performance report. Ensure that your reaction mixture is below 10 degrees Celsius. Slowly add the methyl benzoate dropwise over the course of 10 to 15 minutes by adding four to five drops at a time, mixing it thoroughly between each addition. After the addition is complete, weigh the empty vial. Make sure your TA is present to sign your practical performance report. Remove the reaction flask from the ice bath and allow the solution to stir without cooling for an additional 15 minutes. Obtain about 20 milliliters of DI water. Add a few pieces of ice to this beaker. Then prepare another ice bath and place the beaker inside the ice bath. Carefully pour the nitration solution into the beaker. Stir the solution until precipitation is complete. You'll notice that the cloudiness of the solution dissipates as the product precipitates from the solution. Next, the product will be collected by vacuum filtration. Assemble the filtration apparatus with a filtering flask and a Buettner funnel. Make sure to attach the vacuum trap to protect the vacuum. Wet the filter paper with some ice cold water to make sure it adheres to the funnel. Turn on the vacuum. Next, pour the contents of the beaker into the funnel. If there is a solid still remaining in the beaker, ice cold water can be used to rinse it out. Use about 150 milliliters of ice cold water to wash your product. Make sure to use ice cold water so you don't dissolve your product and pull it through the funnel. At this point, you should have your crude product as the white solid on the filter paper. Remove the vacuum trap prior to turning off the vacuum. Reserve about 5 milligrams of the crude product in a vial for TLC analysis.
Next, a recrystallization will be performed to further purify our product. Transfer the product from the filter paper to a 25 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask. Make sure to get as much of the solid from the filter paper as you can. Transfer some of the methanol into a beaker, then measure out 1 to 3 milliliters. We will use the methanol for the recrystallization because it does not fully dissolve our product at room temperature. Add the methanol to the Erlenmeyer flask. Swirl the flask to mix the solution. Warm the solution on the hot plate until the product dissolves completely. After the product has dissolved, allow the solution to cool to room temperature on the hot plate. Once the flask has reached room temperature, place it in an ice bath until crystal formation is complete. After recrystallization, another vacuum filtration will be performed to isolate the crystals. Assemble another vacuum filtration apparatus. Wet the filter paper with some ice cold methanol and turn on the vacuum. Use a spatula to transfer the crystals to the Buettner funnel. Use ice cold methanol to wash the Erlenmeyer flask and to retrieve any solid remaining. Wash the crystals with ice cold methanol. Remove the vacuum trap prior to turning off the vacuum. Allow the crystals to dry until the next lab period. After the crystals are dry, tear the scale and weigh your crystals. Make sure your TA is present to sign your practical performance report. Place your crystals in a vial for further analysis and to submit to your TA. Next, take the melting point of your product using a melt temp. You should look up the melting point of your product before coming to lab so that you know what temperature range you're aiming for. Add the thermometer to the melt temp. Then carefully crush some of your sample into a finer powder so that it will fit in a capillary tube. Press the open end of the capillary tube into the sample. Flip the tube over and tap the closed end of the tube on the lap bench so that your sample settles on the bottom. Repeat until there is about a centimeter of your sample in the capillary tube. Add the capillary to the sample chamber of the Mel Temp apparatus. Turn on the Mel Temp. You'll want to set the power to a level that causes the temperature to increase at a rate of about 5 to 10 degrees Celsius per minute. Use the viewing window to monitor the state of your product. Allow the temperature to increase until the product begins to melt. You'll want to record a melting point range. The point at which the melting point begins will be the lower limit, and once the melting is complete, you'll record this value as the upper limit of your melting point range. Turn off the melt temp and allow the instrument to cool before removing the thermometer. Dispose of the capillary in the broken glass container. The ferrous hydroxide test will then be performed to test for the presence of a nitro group. This chemical test works by reducing nitro groups to amines. In the process, iron 2 is oxidized to iron 3. 
which can be visually detected as a rust brown precipitate. Measure out 0.1 grams of ferrous ammonium sulfate. Place the ferrous ammonium sulfate in a test tube. Next, measure out about 20 mgs of your product. Then obtain one to two milliliters of DI water and heat it on a hot plate until it boils for about 30 seconds. This is to dispel oxygen from the water. Add the DI water to the test tube and carefully shake the tube to dissolve the ferrous ammonium sulfate. Add one drop of three molar sulfuric acid. Add about 20 mgs of your sample. Measure out one milliliter of two molar potassium hydroxide in methanol. Add one milliliter of the potassium hydroxide solution to the test tube. Swirl the tube to mix and then record your observations. In the presence of a nitro group, a rust brown precipitant will form in the test tube after a minute or so. A TLC analysis will be conducted to assess the purity of our product. To do this, we will compare the RF values of our starting material, the crude product, and the recrystallized product. In order to see a difference between the starting materials and the product, the proper solvent ratio must be used. Here we use a ratio of 6 to 4 dichloromethane and hexanes. Begin by obtaining a few milliliters of dichloromethane. Add about one milliliter of the dichloromethane to each of your samples. Prepare the 6 to 4 ratio of dichloromethane and hexanes mobile phase by mixing 6 milliliters dichloromethane and 4 milliliters of hexanes in a graduated cylinder. Pour the mixture into a beaker and mix thoroughly. Make sure that you don't add so much so that the liquid is above the starting line you will make on your TLC plate. 
Place a watch glass over the beaker to avoid evaporation of the solvent. Next, we will prepare a TLC plate as shown in the diagram. You'll want to draw a starting line about one centimeter from the bottom of the plate and a finish line near the top. Four lanes will then be marked off on the plate. One lane for the starting material, one co-spot lane, one lane for the crude product, and one lane for the pure product. The co-spot lane will contain all three samples so that we can ensure each RF value is distinct. A capillary tube will be used to spot the TLC plate with the samples. This capillary tube differs from that used at the melting point in that both ends are open. You can use a UV lamp to visualize your spots. Place the TLC plate into the beaker and cover the top of the chamber with a watch glass. Allow the TLC to run until the solvent reaches the line marked at the top of the plate. At this point, remove the plate from the chamber and use a UV lamp to visualize the results. Circle any spot on the plate and record the TLC in your notebook. Make sure to draw the plate to scale to ensure that the RF values are correct. Next, an IR spectrum will be taken to confirm the presence of the functional groups in the product. Make sure to identify all the peaks relevant to your molecule. Before running IR, make sure to clean the sample area. Do this by putting some isopropyl alcohol on a chem wipe and wiping off the sample area. Don't put the isopropyl alcohol directly on the instrument. Wave your hand to help dry the isopropyl alcohol. Next, perform a background scan with no sample present. This will remove any background noise. To load your sample, raise the arm up and place just enough sample to cover the small square. You'll only need a few milligrams. Lower the arm and run your sample. Make sure to use the peak picking to assign wave numbers to each of your peaks. After you've ran your sample on the IR, make sure to clean the sample area. Use isopropyl alcohol and a chem wipe. Make sure to never use isopropyl alcohol directly on the IR in the sample area. Finally, a proton NMR spectra for the starting materials and the products will be presented to you by your TA. Determine which spectrum corresponds to which compound and match all the peaks to the respectable protons in the molecule. I hope you found this video helpful to ace your practical.